It's the same logic, it's the same elements, it's just displayed differently for a different end, right? And so this is a metaform, is what we call them, is the other type. <coughs> this is a tree. In a better PowerPoint, it's a tree with colors. <coughs> so use your imagination here for me. The point being that you can use almost any organic or mechanical object that people are familiar with to communicate logical relationships because they already know how that object behaves and works. Such that if I put the root causes literally at the bottom of the tree, you know how this works, right? And the behavior and the consequences, people know how it works. I don't have to explain why things are on the paper where they are. They will immediately go, oh, you think these things cause that. I didn't have to say the box is this and the arrow means this and there's so many whatevers, right? It just it makes sense to people. And even better when you use cultural symbols and references that are local and make sense and have used frequently. Note that the rules are the same for each in terms of what must be there, their quality, and their logic. This has not changed. But how I display them is different. One is representational, it's a good insider baseball. The other is much more, has much more communications power to the uninformed audience. And the best logic models I have seen are always, always some type of metaform, a <laughs> metaphor literally taken to mean a specific form of the metaphor. Right? And, and the tree's the most common, people get it, right? Um, but there are much better ones that can allow you to have the same level of detail as what you had in the representational one and carry that forward. So, uh, I live in St. Louis. Uh, that means we're a river town, where, where two rivers come together, in fact, right? Mississippi. To navigate the Mississippi, you'll see a series of locks. Anytime you fly into St. Louis, if you've ever flown into St. Louis, you usually fly over the arch. People are like, ooh, that's if you're on the left-hand side of the plane. If you're on the right-hand side of the plane, what you see are the locks that the barges are using to go upriver. They're headed your way in Wisconsin, right? Okay. So if you think about it, I had one of the most brilliant logic models I've ever seen be a series of locks. We must do this to raise the water level to this, and if we will, then kids will be able to do this, and it goes to this. And you could see this really complex youth development process in the most simple, easy to understand way I have ever seen it displayed. It was perfect for a river town. Everyone knew it, half the people worked around it. <laughs> it was just part of what we saw every day. It was us, and it communicated, and there was lots of detail in it, and the log line logic was there, and the quality was there. You could critique it for sufficiency. All the rules we'd apply to a normal, right? was done with locks. It was great. Working with a community in Washington State, there were three rivers come together into a big lake that goes out into one river with a dam. And so they used those three, each river, to be its own major issue with its causes, its tributaries, resulting in a commons youth development and outcomes that they wanted. It literally was their community. Huge amount of detail able to be displayed. A lot of complex thinking about how these things fit together and result, right? But it was super easy to see. You could take it to literally anybody in the community. You could take it to the teachers meeting and to the PTO for the parent teachers organization. You could take it to just about anywhere and show them that logic model and never call it such. And say, this is our understanding of why we're having these problems in this community, right? And these are the consequences and why. And people would critique it right away and go, you're missing something. I didn't know that in a way that they would never engage if it were just boxes and arrows left to right. Because I don't care how graphically cool with colors and everything else the boxes and arrows left to right are. If you, like my mom often said at the Christmas tree, just kind of squint at it, it's prettier, right? Ooh, right, okay. <clears throat> if you just kind of squint at that, it basically says, I'm complex. I'm hard to understand, right? I'm for somebody else. I haven't even looked at what the content is just that much staring at me says that and turns a lot of people off in their ability to understand and engage with your work. Clearly I'm building a case for the power of a metaphor and their importance that you have one. All right? Let me use one more example because I'm very prejudiced. I'll own it. I'm very prejudiced that these, these are necessary and we often need to have more than one and we usually get the one done for the grant and we don't get around to the one for the community. The one that matters more is the one for the community. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> working with uh, some folks in Shiprock in, in New Mexico as part of the Healthy Native Community Fellowship Program. We're working with a lot of folks who sent representatives from the whole variety of tribes, urban and rural, from across the country over a number of years. And when they developed logic model, I couldn't critique them. 
Normally I'm used to being able to sit down with somebody and go, hmm, and poke and prod and ask questions and learn something from them. And I couldn't because they used some cultural references that for me weren't in my culture. I don't know why things belonged in certain places on a wheel. I don't know. It's not how I was raised. But man, did that work at the chapter house. They would show up and people would engage with an understanding of how things are and how they wanted them to be. It, was, it did exactly what it's supposed to do. It communicated how things are and how we should make them different in a way that that community could engage with. And it left me as an outsider and that's perfectly okay. <laughs> it worked. So they can be literally uh, organic or mechanical things because they grow and therefore they have a relationship or because they move, therefore one thing happens before another, they have inherent line logic those two types, or they can be cultural symbols for which there's a tradition of logic behind them as to why things are that they are. And all of those are great examples of metaforms. Yes? That was you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, do you build these metaforms with your coalition, or do you take your box graphs and plug it into your coalition? Yeah, picture? let's talk about that. So process, how do you build one? Right? Because now we're into a, yet another space of creativity, right? Who knew there was so much creativity in data? Wow, all right, so <laughs> we brainstormed and then we vetted the ideas against some standards so that we're not creating a model of everything, we're creating a model of those things we're carrying forward as we carry them forward and build them out, right? So there's a step in here. Now you need to engage some folks more creative than I in a certain kind of creativity. Who are good at visuals? Who do you have that's got talented in that area? Can young people create your logic model for you? Do you need a good graphic designer? This is a chance to engage business, right? Do you have some area artists who care very much about kids and would love to help you devise something, right? So I'd ask for some help here. Now today we're gonna do one anyway, and we're just gonna draw stick people because that's about the level of my artistic ability and it's okay, right? We're gonna create one, all right? We're gonna give it our best try with four colors on the, on the top of the paper, but you're right. Even a rough idea of what it could be and taken to someone else with real talent can be turned into something that has good communications power. And this is a, a niche skill. Not everyone is equally facile when it comes to painting or drawing or creating a graphic. The argument I'm trying to make here is twofold. One, that you should have both. Because you need both, depending on the audience, to serve the purpose logic models serve. Which is to communicate your strategic thinking, organize your current data, and show how you're going to make a difference in one picture. So you need to have both. And the second thing I'm going to argue, argue very strongly is they have to meet the same tests, which is to say that they have to have everything present. We're going to go through the tests in a while and we'll critique our logic models. But you don't get off the hook in the metaphor. It still has to have line logic. It still has to, the dog still has to hunt. It's still got to work. <clears throat> because sometimes metaphors and metaforms slide into infographics. Now, an infographic is a great thing. Can someone describe to me what an infographic is? Anybody familiar with infographics? We see in them, they're becoming more popular. How would you describe one? So it's usually like um, some kind of related picture. So you might have like people, and then usually they're like filled in to show percentages. Mm -hmm. like, you know, this many cars. Yes. Yeah, so it just kind of allows you to see the topic mm -hmm. based on a picture, and then also some kind of graph. Or yes. Could you all hear that all right? So we have a topic. Usually we're trying to communicate some data. We do so by including a picture. Right? And so it can be, a, it has communications power because it makes it easier to understand a given piece of information, an infographic, okay? Well, that's certainly true of logic models, but not all. In other words, it's far more than that. An infographic would be a reductionistic or a subset of a logic model. An infographic can be a way to communicate for one piece of information. You see these in USA Today all the time, right? Bottom left-hand corner, there's some little graph of the day, right? They've usually turned it into some kind of picture in a way that makes it easier to understand real quick what it is. That's good for communication, but that's not a logic model. So your metaphor can't just be a nifty way to communicate a piece of data. It has to show your diagnosis. So it has to have line logic in it. All right. That said, here's what we'd like you to do. I'd like you to go back to your wall. You've got four choices in front of you, right? One of them was probably your favorite. OK, maybe they're your kids, and you can't choose a favorite. But let's just say, one of them's, you know, Go ahead and say it. One of your kids is smarter. It's all right. OK, so <laughs> looking at the four choices you have, you have one from the, the first cause, the root cause technique that we did. We have one from ABC. You've got one from the three Ws. And you've got one from five Ys. Pick the one that you thought was your best result. Which one did you like best? It seemed to work best for your issue. And take that off the wall and use that as the working document we're going to work from. 
pretend like you've put some tests to these ideas. You've got local data, prevention science supports, community wisdom, remember the ones we just put up there? Okay? And I'm going to give you a pass and say that they, all the ideas met all those tests, so you get to include them in your picture. All right? So let's just suspend judgment for a second on that front. Because we're not working in a community, we don't have the time to go back and get your data. We're going to fast forward through that step and pretend like it's happened. Take your best result, and I want you to create a metaphor. This may take a moment to sit and brainstorm. Talk to a friend about it. You can use a tree, that's great, or a car, a road, or a river, right? It can, be, it can be a series of locks, it can be a plant, it can be anything you want. Think about your own community. What would seem like your place? And picking that metaphor, think, how could I use that metaphor to display this analysis that I've just generated? Right? Issue, cause, effect. Are you see where we're going? Tell us your preferred technique, uh, the visual you created, and in some cases they're particular to a community, so tell us why, et cetera, right? Just give us that real quick. So I'm going to start over here with the flower on the wall that says, draw the line. This is, draw the line, Donathan. It's, uh, we use root cause and we pick the sunflower because we're from Kansas. Okay, so we got root cause, we use a sunflower because we're from Kansas. Great, okay. <laughs> Next one is? Um, this is a keg of influence. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> I chose the uh, five whys because our root causes was not very complete. So okay. There's more on this. More on the five whys to work with. Got it. So you've got the whole flow going from there. City. Got it. Nice. Next one over is Milwaukee Starburst. Yes. So Milwaukee Starburst was actually perfect. It's like the most iconic statue in the entire city. Everyone knows what it looks like. It's orange and it's shaped just like the root causes. So it was, it was perfect. And then it sits in front of the art museum and we kind of ran out of, um, of, of arms. So we added it in the back and we, it, yeah. The other two should have been, it's shaped like a bird. So it should have been on the two wings. And then going up the arms, we wrote down sort of like what those root causes looked like, so. Great, so we use a local iconic piece of art, right? I think they've got a picture of it even if you want to see what it looks like yeah, sitting like out. It. It's huge, it's public art, it's massive. And it's something everybody in Milwaukee knows. Great, love it. Oh, and I'm, the, I'm sorry, she's sitting right in front of me. You're right. Down below, underage drinking. Yeah, we have the contractors on today, and we're in different states. So we combined a couple. Great. But do you use the 3W? Uh, yes. 3W analysis to produce a picture of the town? Yes. We just put everywhere alcohol is accessible, and that our kids, everywhere they look, it's accessible. Got it. Very good. Very good. So y'all, we might move it up a little bit so everybody can see it, but don't miss that when you're going around doing our gallery tour. Next. Um, mine is uh, the uh, circle of life. Um, I'm a Native American. And what I, when we did this one, the ABC, it just made me think of um, emotional decisions, your physical um, um, consequences, your mental choices that, that go into it, and the spirituals where your parents and all lead you. And the thing I added was ceremonials, um, the decisions and choices, emotional and then the loss of life would be physical, and then like the mental would be again, where the kids are learning their own personal responsibility. Okay, so great. That's, that's what I'm... Which would work very well in your community? Yes. And probably wouldn't work in St. Louis, so it's ideal. Yeah. Good. And we did, we did the same thing, just pulling from the other three. Okay, so um, you used these three techniques. Yeah, okay. and we, we did the, the tree because okay. we are from a community where there's water, but there's also forest, and everybody refers to the forest, and it's, where the kids go to drink. Uh, they ah. go out in the woods and they yes. have bonfires and catering. Yeah. So even better. So we talk about that. Great. So it's got a strong local connection in yes. addition to being a metaphor. Great. Yes. Uh, next, um, looks like an ABC technique. Yeah, so we use, um, we didn't work together yesterday and we're both from different states. So we just hey. butterflies, you know. Works. Everybody has butterflies. Yep. Ah, all right. All right. Got it. Um, and we use the ABC technique and put it on the board, on the shape of the butterfly, figuring that our Nice. Very nice. Um, I just don't have it by it up there. Oh, okay. The top. Okay. And, um, basically, um, we chose the root cause because 
um, in our community, it's, it's, it's very important for us to find out, you know, what's causing it, get to that point before you can do anything else because if you attack in the other ways, we wouldn't, we'll be going at it wrong. Mm -hmm. And you have to, each community is different, so you have to see what's affecting that community, why they're mm -hmm. doing certain things, so mm -hmm. it shows who calls. And we kind of did that thing kind of backwards a little bit. Okay. <laughs> It's like, okay, we got the warm front and the cold front, right? Okay, so cold front, warm front. Right, and I'm not all that good with, you know, how brainstorm started or anything. <laughs> so, uh, and then the storm clouds, actually the underage drinking, and um, at the bottom the raindrops are the availability, peer pressure, but then also you can go from the bottom because, because of the pre uh, precipitation that comes up. You can mm -hmm. go this way too. Okay, this is the availability, peer pressure, family problems can start the cloud mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then but also at the end you can also have a ray of sunshine because if you and I put in they can make good choices extracurricular activities different things they can do to make the sun come out so I was just thinking outside the box a little bit I like it <laughs> Again, the idea of a metaphor is you can take a complex thing like there are positive and negative things. There's positive youth development and threats to it, and you can put it in the same picture right, in a way that people otherwise would have a hard time understanding. If you just said, well, all the red boxes and all the yellow boxes, it, no, right? Nice. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next group, we use the root cause. Yep. In our area was uh, Washington, D.C., and a violent crime in Washington, D.C., and obviously everybody understands being punched in the face. All right. Um, so the fists that are actually hitting the, the person who caused the violent crime are the risk factors. Okay. The local conditions are the arms driving the fist. Okay. And uh, the other things that aren't necessarily fists are other things in the community and the environment that we are not addressing but realize and accept are there. Nice. Wow. Very graphically compelling. Good. <laughs> Gets your attention. Good. Next, uh, the ABC technique. Not so graphically compelling. <laughs> <laughs> These are roads, and I used the ABC and looked at the causes and the things that would empower them to make it a choice, and then what would happen afterwards that would make them choose or not choose again. So you could see they have their initial yes or no choice. If they do choose to drink, this is what they might be thinking. They come to the crossroad to decide again based on these factors. If they get on the right path, it leads to success. If they get on the wrong path, it leads to closed roads and danger. Likewise, on the no side, if they um, go one way, they end up again in drinking in the bad road. And if they don't drink, they end up on the path to success. Nice. Lovely. And it contains the whole idea that both are acting, aren't they, at the same time, that duality. It keeps splitting. Nice. Why don't you think that's graphically compelling? <laughs> okay, we'll call it aesthetically pleasing. How's that? All right. <coughs> Next to last. Sure. They let me use the, the peach tree because okay. my community has an 80-plus-year-old peach festival that we do every year. Um, we use the peach tree, and then we use the, um, the five whys, and then we had to steal a little bit from the roots technique because I hadn't vetted all the ah. way out some of the others. Okay. The five whys. Nice. From the center of the table. So uh, we did, uh, we were looking at prescription drug misuse in our teens, so we kind of use the science <laughs> kind of chemistry. Ah, um, I like it. And we were doing the five Y, so ideally, if we had more time, we would have had more layers in, mm -hmm. the, in the flask. Um, and then on the, so like that was perception of harm, and then we had other flasks that kind of showed that there's other things in the flask. Ah. So you'd fully built out this part, so that's reflected in the one that's fully built out. Here are the ones that haven't been fully, had not been done the analysis, and so they're waiting to be done. Nice. Terrific.